All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our call with Drew Aller. As always, please raise your hand and I will call and we'll start with Greg Pickle. Morning, Drew. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for your time this morning. Drew, looking back over your first two weeks, where do you think the biggest areas of growth have been for you uh, compared to last year and then preseason camp? Yeah, I would just say that the biggest areas are definitely it's what I've been saying, comfort level. Um, I mean, with the more game reps you get, the more comfortable you're going to get. So obviously the first two games, there's been a lot of reps to go out and just feel a lot more comfortable in the offense. Um, I think we're we're doing good things as a whole offense right now, uh, being very well balanced. I think we're doing a great job. O-line's doing a tremendous job up front, whether it be in a pass game or pass pro or run blocking. And um, I think we're just doing a really good job as an offense right now of just uh, trying to be more consistent each week. And now now we have to put a full week of practice together. Rich Garcia. Good morning, Drew. Thanks for doing this. Drew, what do you see on film from Illinois' pass rush and pass coverage? Yeah, I mean, I think they present a lot of different things. Uh, they're they're very – they make everything look the same, um, and they do a really good job of disguising. Uh, they have they have a lot of big big guys up front, a lot of size up front. Uh, so it's good, it's definitely going to be a challenge this week. I mean, first Big Ten, Big Ten game on the road, it's not going to be easy by any stretch. Uh, and they're a really good team, really talented and really well coached. So it's definitely going to be a challenge. But um, I think we just need to – you know, just stay stay in tune with us. Uh, keep keep working on our offense. Uh, keep working on the small things because in the end of the at the end of the day, the small things and uh, add up to the big things. And um, yeah, but they're they're a really well coached defense. Uh, I mean, they force a lot of turnovers in their past, and uh, they they really get after the quarterback, and they they do a good job of slowing down the run game. So it's going to be a huge challenge for us this week. Audrey Snyder. Hey, Drew, thanks for doing this. Um, I was wondering when you kind of go back um, and look at your receiving core and the way that's developed, um, how would you describe the relationship you've had with Keandre and how you've kind of bolstered that since, you know, last winter to now? Yeah, I think it really started for uh, for all of us over the summer uh, when we got back up on campus in May after the, the spring semester. Um, I think that's when our biggest growth hit because we were, throw, we were literally throwing like four to five times a week every morning. Uh, getting up bright and early, like 8 a.m. throwing in the morning um, before classes and before workouts. And I think that that's really paid off because we were able to really hone in on the little details. Like we wouldn't throw a lot of different routes. We'd focus on the probably like three to five routes a day, uh, whether it be quick game, short game or red zone. And I think that's when we saw the most improvement because each day we we had a plan and we attacked it with a with the right mindset to gain something out of it and just talk through a lot of things. And I think that really helped us going into fall camp because we weren't we weren't behind as opposed to like spring ball where we I felt like we were kind of behind going into spring ball because we didn't have that chemistry down. Uh, so I think by the time we got to fall camp, we were just really well in tuned. And then that, that helped us just build momentum as a whole, whole uh, receiver room and quarterback room. Drew, um, going back to Greg's first question last week, James was talking about the you know biggest growth or improvement from week one to week two, you know, specifically for you looking back on the film, what were some things that you felt you did better against Delaware than you did against West Virginia? Yeah, I think uh, overall it was probably a little bit cleaner in protections. Um, I felt like I did a better job of, you know, recognizing the defenses because a lot, I mean, the last two defenses we see, we have saw or we saw, like presented a lot of different fronts and um, blitzes and pa blitz packages that were really, you know, challenging to unfold. And I felt like last week we did a better job of quarterbacks picking them up and the offensive line also making us right uh, because they brought a lot of different stunts that are not easy to pick up and the offensive line handled it really well. So I would say that was probably the biggest area, just pass protections. And then, um, I mean, just nailing down, like all of the all the MAs, uh, we we did a little bit better this past week, but we just need to clean up everything overall. Ben Jones, hey Drew, um, I'm sure you're happy to be here, and I appreciate you taking the time. Um, 
James said that you know the offense cold, and I'm curious when it comes to the day that you didn't know anything about the offense to where you are today, what's the functional process of learning a playbook, the learning the hand signals, learning the tags? How do you how do you do that? And how do you is it flashcards? How do you get to this point? Yeah, uh, it's it's definitely challenging to me. The hardest part of the offense was the signals because um, I, I felt like I was pretty good with like all the X's and O's and, and like knowing the plays, but then seeing the signals and then having to think through everything uh, was a, the hardest part for me. But it really just it starts from the fundamentals uh, in the past game. It always starts with protection and knowing what makes you hot and who you're hot off of and what's your hot answer in the protections. So. I think it really all starts up front with the protections and then you can really dive into like just learning the progressions and then really understanding the why behind the what uh, and why you run certain concepts against certain defenses, why they're why some concepts are better against certain defenses uh, opposed to other defenses. So I think uh, as a whole quarterback room, we, we have a really firm grasp of everything uh, in both the run and pass game. And I think it's really paying off for us right now. Yeah, Drew, building off of Daniel's question a bit uh, with the film room, what you guys were able to accomplish uh, on Sunday, Monday, taking a look at that. What's an area that you feel like you you guys, maybe maybe you personally or as an offense, still need to iron out and still need to get better at? Uh, you've mentioned the MAs, the missed assignments, maybe it's that, but uh, what's something coming out of those film sessions that you're like, all right, we, we got to get a little bit better in this area? Yeah, I, I just keep saying the MAs and Mr. Simons just because um, obviously you don't want to have any, uh, and that's our goal to, be, to not have any MAs. But um, it really just comes down to the fundamentals and knowing your assignments. And uh, like Coach Franklin and Coach Yersich always talk about preparing as, you're, if, as if you're the starter and asking the questions throughout the week. Uh, so when you get into the game, you're you're playing off uh, your reaction and anticipation and not really guessing and second guessing yourself on if you're doing something right or doing something wrong. So I think it just comes down to like asking all the questions you can and not not being 80 percent sure on something. Always like don't don't be afraid to ask the questions because the coaches are here to help us at the end of the day and uh, they're not going to be mad at you for asking questions. So I think it's just comes down to communication and uh, being able to go out on the field and execute the plan, game plan the coaches put together for us. Mark Wogan, Rich. Hey, Drew, thanks again. Um, where were you in 2021 when Penn State played Illinois? Were you able to watch that game? What do you remember about that? What were your impressions of that day? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was a senior in high school. Uh, so I was, I was, I think I was just at home watching the game just because I had a game the night before, but honestly, I don't, I don't remember too much about that game. Um, and I know we're, we're two completely different teams right now. Um, uh, it's two years ago. So there's a lot, a lot of things have changed. We have a lot of players that aren't here anymore and the same with them, but, um, so we're just focusing on this this week's opponent, uh, this week's Illinois. Uh, so we're not going to dive too much into that and just keep focusing on what Illinois has put on tape this these past two weeks, really. Got a petition on? Hey, Drew, a little bit of a different question. I noticed on your Twitter profile, your pinned post is still – uh, the season opener from last year at Purdue. Beyond that being your first game, is there something about that game that day that kind of has inspired you to keep that as your pinned post? Uh, no, I mean, I didn't, I didn't even know that was my pinned post, to be honest. Uh, no, but I mean, uh, I think it just reassured, like the message is what we want to, we want to have the consistent message each week. And Coach Franklin always talks about, uh, being consistent throughout the program, and we we always just want to have that one and zero mindset, uh, whether it be the one and zero in the game or just going one and zero on a rep throughout practice or in the game. Uh, just having that six second mentality, um, and having a short term memory. Uh, forget the mistakes, forget the things you did good. Just focus on the the play that's happening in the present. Andrew Snyder. Hey, Drew, um, in the 
Locker room video after week one, James kind of called you up to address the team, and it looked like you didn't really want to do that. You were kind of like shy and quiet about that. How do you feel like you're stepping into that role of being the guy, and what's it like kind of navigating campus these days when a lot of people know who you are? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I do my more of my talking like on the field um, opposed to off the field, always communicating with teammates. And um, yeah, I guess that's just kind of how I am. Uh, I don't like being the center of tension that much, to be honest. Uh, it's not my comfort zone by any any means. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. I, I think we all deal with that as Penn State football players uh, on campus here. And yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's just something that we all have to deal with. But, I mean, it it's nothing that adds to my day, like any stress or anything like that. So, I mean, it, I definitely appreciate everything just because we have such a uh, passionate fan base. And, um, yeah, I think we all appreciate that as a team. Steve Thomas. Yeah, Drew. So, um with with the offense, it seemed like you guys have had you know a, a good a good flow so far, relative ease moving the ball down the field. Obviously, it hasn't been perfect, but how much how much encouragement do you get from how you guys have been able to execute so far through two games? Yeah, I mean we're definitely encouraged by it, but like you said, it hasn't been perfect. Um, I mean we we started fast last week for the second week in a row, but uh, we we definitely put ourselves behind. The sticks in a couple of situations uh we 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 were fortunate enough to you know make up for our mistakes um but we we can't be in third and longs on the first drive and uh penalties and stuff like that so i think we just need to have a cleaner operation from that standpoint but definitely encouraged uh nothing nothing uh that we can't fix uh it's only things we, we can improve on and i think if we we have that mindset that everything is is able to be improved that will we'll be more and more consistent each week. Time for two more. Daniel Gallen. Drew, we, we saw you get, I think, three series with Nick Dawkins as your center. Um, what is it like having him as your center? How is he different than Hunter? And just, you know, he missed so much time last year. So what has it been like to get him, you know, into the field, getting all of these reps? Yeah, I mean it's it's really good for Doc. Um, I, there there's no drop off between Hunter and Doc, and I think that comes from the type of people they are, the type of workers they are. They're both extremely hard workers. Um, and being the center, uh, not a lot of people know how how much they have to know throughout the offense. And those guys are always in the film room and always in treatment, uh, just because of their bodies, keeping up with their bodies. But I think they both do a really good job of just communicating whether it be with me or the whole offensive line, just calling out IDs and the the run run blocking schemes that we have on certain plays. And I think they both do a great job of that. And I'm definitely happy to see Doc get out there, uh, especially in that type of a game, just because of how much time he's missed uh, in the past. But And he's, he's a great teammate. I, there's not one guy on this team that can't get along with Nick Dawkins. And I think that's just a credit to how he approaches his business and just his personality in general. Last question, Ron Snyder. Hey, Drew, just going back to the Purdue, um, how much do you think just having that experience of playing in the Big Ten on the road can really help you conceptualize what you need to do to be successful this week? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely an experience that I've had on the, in my past, but um, – yeah, I don't know how. I mean, uh, we played on the road a ton last year. Even if I if I didn't get in the game, I was still able to experience what it's like to be on the road. Um, and I think it's it's going to be a great challenge. Uh, they have a great fan base, and they have a they have a really cool environment at that stadium. And obviously, Illinois plays a, a lot of teams extremely tough, so it's definitely going to be a a challenge for us this week. So we're going to have to really put a whole week together when it comes to practice meetings and walkthroughs uh, to go out and give ourselves the best chance to be one and zero on Saturday.